Good morning, everyone. Good to have you here today. Through this worship today, I hope God will give us strength and renew our hearts so that we can remain faithful to His love. Today's call to worship comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 19, and 20, and 22. I invite you to listen as we are being called into worship. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most high place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through curtain, that is his body, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us pray. God of life, present and promised, you are the one to whom we call, for you are the one who hears, and you are the one who acts. Bring us new life with your grace and love and power. Lead us in our time of worship, that we may be prepared to follow your lead in places where life is at risk, places where hope seems far away, places where dreams die during sleep. When we leave these walls, help us leave the teachings we proclaim within this place of worship through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing the opening song, Here I am to worship. Let us pray together. Forgive us, O God, when we see the world through rose-colored glasses, rather than as it really is, much less the way we seek it to be. Forgive us, Holy One, when we forsake lively and risky faith, calling us to be agents of change in our world, for the bland conviction that all will be well. Renew us with your grace and ground us with your spirit that we might be empowered to live in word and deed as testimonies to the power of your love over the grave. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now let us spend a moment of personal and silent confession. Let's confess in a silence.
Now let's confess the assurance of grace. Friends, believe and proclaim the good news. In Jesus Christ, love breaks through hatred, hope breaks through despair, life breaks through death. We are forgiven, loved, and set free. Now being reconciled to God and to one another, one another, let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace and reconciliation with the person sitting right next to you and through this video. May Christ peace be with you and your family. Yeah. Well, the spread of COVID-19 pandemic is getting wild and now it has gone over all around the world. But I pray that God will be with us and keep us safe under His wings so that we'll be comforted and also strengthened. Uh, I have a short announcement for uh, the new Bible study that Pastor Jin and I uh, just started last week. It's called the, uh, the New City Catechism. Uh, please uh, send me text or email uh, and I will give you a link. So let us continue our study in Christian doctrine through this Bible study uh, that we are uh, doing now. Now, uh, let us turn to our scripture reading for today. Uh, it comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 to, 1 to 8. Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 1 to 8. Let me read out for you. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Their dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served, while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. When Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. As a keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. This is what of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Charles Spurgeon is considered to be one of the greatest preachers from the 19th century. In fact, he is called the Prince among preachers. Even though Spurgeon died over a hundred years ago, many people appreciate his sermons and still read them. This is a story of Spurgeon of his, and, his, and his wife. They owned chickens and would sell the eggs their chicken laid. They refused to give the eggs away for free. They asked their close relatives and friends to buy their eggs at a reasonable cost. As a result, some people thought the Spurgeons were leading a double life. As devoted people who encourage people to share their resources and great people who do not live up to their word. The Spurgeon humbly accepted their criticism without defending themselves. And only after Mrs. Spurgeon died, the people who criticized them found out the real story behind their behavior. The Spurgeons never spent one penny of the money they collected for selling eggs on themselves. Every penny that they made 
for the sales of their eggs were used to support two elderly widows. Although Spurgeon never told it to anyone, the story itself became one of the greatest sermons Spurgeon ever preached. That is why he was one of the most cherished preachers of all time. Not only people heard his excellent sermons from his word, they saw, they saw his sermon from his action through his lifestyle. In our scripture reading for today, we see how a woman named Mary shows her love for Jesus to that, so that everyone can see He is our Lord and Savior. Jesus was visiting Mary and Martha, whose brother Lazarus Jesus had laid from the dead. Lazarus had fallen seriously ill, and his life was in danger. Mary and Martha immediately sent for Jesus. But by the time he arrived, Lazarus had died. So the sisters were distraught. If only Jesus had lived in time. If only Jesus arrived in time. Lazarus would still be alive. But Jesus went to Lazarus' grave and called out him to come out. Then Lazarus came back to life and walked out his grave, still being wrapped from head to feet in linen. Lazarus was alive, and Jesus had turned a sad funeral into joyful celebration while there had been weeping. There was now laughter. Next in the scripture, we read about Jesus having a dinner with Lazarus. As she would always do, Martha is busy in the kitchen preparing meal for her very special guest. Jesus and Lazarus are having a conversation. Before Jesus would arrive in Jerusalem, where his enemies were looking for the ways to arrest Jesus, he visits his dear friends, and perhaps trying to say a final goodbye. And Mary came into the room with Jesus, and the others were, carrying a bottle of the most exquisite and expensive perfume. The Bible says it was nard, aromic oil made from a plant in India. It was very expensive. It was not like the perfume we can buy at the store with the cash we have in the pocket. In fact, this perfume was worth about a year's wages. Then the Bible continues the story with what Mary did with that expensive perfume. She knelt before Jesus like a servant girl, not a friend. She poured it on the feet of Jesus. She also dried his feet with her hair, perhaps to spread the nard fragrance of Jesus. We don't know how she got the nard perfume, but it was very expensive and it's been Mary's most prized possession. The best she had to give. Throughout today's story, we would like to understand what made her pour her life saving on someone's feet. What made her use such expensive nard oil or perfume when something cheaper would have been replaced? Just to explain briefly, what Mary did was an act of devotion. She wanted to give a very special gift from all of her heart. She wanted to give the best she had and perhaps the only best thing she had was the bottle of Nard perfume. Jesus was a very special person for her. She loved him dearly and she felt 
it was the right time to show her heart. So she gave him the best she had. And that is what people do when they are in love. Don't they? A husband loves his wife and he wants to give her the best. And it is the same for the wife. When the parents love their child, they want to give the child the best. That reminds our God Father his love towards his children. His love is far more perfect and much greater than ours. Throughout the story of prodigal son, we see God's abundant and infinite love for his children. It was the story of God's complete commitment and forgiveness for us. In today's scripture reading, Mary responds to the great love Jesus has shown to her brother Lazarus and to sister Martha. She was to demonstrate her love and devotion to Jesus in a very practical way. We are now just one week away from Passion Week, which starts next Sunday. And today's scripture has a special message for us as we draw near to the end of the season. First, what Mary has done for Jesus shows us what true devotion is. Mary's kneeling at Jesus' feet reminded us of the posture of a true servant, Jesus, when he was having a meal with his disciples at Passover night. Out of true love and devotion, he knelt before them and washed their feet. Jesus showed that he came into the world to be our servant. He showed not only his best friends, he not only served his best friends, but the one who would betray him, the one who would deny him, the one who would desert him. That was his extravagant love and true devotion for them. Most of all, Jesus took the one Jesus took on the nature of a servant through he, though he was very nature of God. Then he gave his life so that we might gain life. There was a life through forgiveness and promise for a new relationship and a new hope for eternity. Secondly, Mary's act of devotion for Jesus parallel to how Jesus did not hold back his love for us. Mary offered the best of what she had to give Jesus. And Jesus gave us the best of what he had to offer his life. Out of his complete and perfect love for us, God gave up his divine privileges as the Son of God and the creator of the world and became a sacrificial lamb so that we can set free from slavery of sin and have eternal life in heaven. Thirdly, Mary, Mary's giving to the Lord out of love and devotion for Him inspires us to ask ourselves if our devotion measure up to a standard of God and Savior. God's generous gift of Christ should be good enough in the way we give to God. It should produce overflowing thanksgiving in praise and worship. We should be like Mary. She was satisfied with nothing but the best but the best when she honored God. Thus, when we worship Jesus, God's word must be read and spoken. The way we participate in the service should be reading, playing music, 
singing and ushering and most of all welcoming others and we should respond to God's word by encouraging one another to devote their worship to God with joy and thanksgiving Mary's unselfish love and full devotion for Jesus touch us in all areas of life such love and devotion inspire us and lead us to serve those who are facing hard times and need our love however Judas Iscariot pointed out that Mary had gone been too extravagant to show her devotion to Jesus but Jesus welcomed her full devotion and Mary's devotion surely challenges us to give our money our time and our service generously as a humble way of communicating our Lord and Savior with love thanksgiving and commitment fourthly the story of Mary shows how often we speak and act like Judas how stingy we are when it comes to, when it comes to giving of our time our money and our service to the Lord and Savior a good question that comes out of hearing Mary's devotion is like when was the last time I did something extravagant because my passion for Jesus not because I felt I had to do it or it was the right thing to do for I knew I would feel guilty if I didn't when was the last time I was fully committed as I gave myself my time my skill and material blessing that God has provided me and use them generously and sacrificially to serve my neighbor and my church and Mary's complete devotion to Jesus makes us ask ourselves as a church how well we made it clear that the love of Jesus is what motivates us as a church when people look at us as a church they see what we do if we take a risk to follow Jesus to be a light and song of the world rather than stay comfortable and just enjoy our privilege Mary had to face criticism from Judas when she knelt before Jesus and poured perfume on his feet and like what she did showing our love and commitment to Jesus as our Lord and Savior means taking a risk by staying out of our comfort zone and privilege. Mary has shown the true love that doesn't count the cost. And we are called for the same love that does count the cost. But the love that Jesus himself showed us through his death on the cross it's the kind of love that cannot calculate the cost because the cost is simply too high. As we are observing the season of Lent, we want to remind ourselves that we have limited our love because the cost has been too high. But Jesus came and resolved our problem of sin by offering himself as a sacrificial lamb. That's why he came to us. He came to forgive us and to give us fresh new start so that we can give to Jesus to show our love for him. So what can we give to Jesus to show our love for him? I think we want to give him our very best. We want to give him our life. 
every aspect of our life. We pray that He will bless us so that we would give all of ourselves to God so that we can honor Him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would bless us so that we'll give all of ourselves to you to glorify the sacrifice and the love that you have shown us on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, let us sing the responsive song, Bless Be Your Name. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for giving us your love and listen to your word. Thank you for your life, the death that brought us out of the slavery of sin and gave us a new life. We pray that you would help us to be like Mary who offered you the best she had. So that we can demonstrate our love for you not in our words but in our action help us to be a sermon that others other people can see continue to pray to you as more people get sick and the healthcare workers are working with more risk due to the coronavirus bring your protection and healing to our nation and around the world we believe in your sovereign control. We ask that you keep the coronavirus from its spread. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Have a blessed week.